Today I specifically um, decided to show you some games that um, might make you rethink chess just a little bit. Uh, it's like, I don't know, let me try to explain it better. So these games, each one of them had a, such a huge impact in my career, mainly because it, they were so hurtful and it was like those type of games that I knew I was winning and I knew I could have done better or I wasn't at least losing and I was playing higher rated so there was like that stress of uh oh I'm playing someone who's stronger than me but I kind of couldn't really control myself or my opponent simply did much better than I did or for any reason it just didn't turn out as it should have and they kind of slipped away or I chickened out one of those two, how, however you want to think about it. So it's made the, these games quite painful for me. I've shown some painful games before, but not in a, um, not more than one at a time. Because, you know, I, I like my dignity. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see, we can try it. Uh, hello. 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 Hey, okay. I didn't mean to call you. I didn't. Oh, sorry. You're good. Sorry. So, got a call from producer. Probably a slip finger dial. Let's go for that. I'm good. Well, it's better than not. Um, it's better than receiving a call that you're off air. Those are the. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore that call. Okay. All right. So. Uh, getting calls from producers is scary if you are a streamer it's it usually means that you're doing something wrong or something's going wrong or your Wi-Fi is dead or something is dead basically so yeah that's scary but besides the producer scaring me <laughs> poor Ben Simon um, let's look at this let's look at some scary game so I can personally scare myself <laughs> um, <laughs> So I have few, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so I have four games that I'm hoping to get to, and um, this might be a little bit of a stretch because the little bit of OBS playfuling for me, but uh, also GMP, she's not here, he's kind of staring at his litter box, which is kind of weird, anyways. Um, so this was this was the first game that uh, it was in Air Flute 2016 or 15. It was 2016, yeah, because I had my two, I had just crossed 2400. Like I played January and February tournaments nonstop, and then I went to Air Flute, and this was like yeah, it was March 1st. Oh my god, almost five years ago. I feel so old. Anyways, I went to Air Flute, and I got so sick, and I remember that like. The first round, I actually went to the game. This was the first round. I went to the game with like a box of um, tissues that I kind of finished middle of the game, and then I had asked one of my friends to bring me another one. So it was like a very uh, memorable game. <laughs> but it, I played it. I actually played it decent, and I had the chance to get um, uh, will not lose. Let's go with that. But I blew it ha, almost as well as I was blowing my nose. Yeah, a lot of ouch, just thinking about it. Anyways, so um, let's start the yeah, let's start the game, and hopefully I can give you a little bit more insight on how to not play chess when you can't breathe. Yeah, it was such a horrible. The only like I remember I did exams like that once or twice, history and geography. Oof, I don't recommend that. If you're sick, you should stay in bed. You shouldn't go flying around and taking exams. All right. Um. Oh, well, excellent. Thank you. That's that's kind of good. Yeah, I guess if um, my stream is better than Poke Champs, that's sure. Why not? I I'm here to be entertaining. <laughs> Grade twelve. I finished the whole box on the second box. I don't remember if I finished it or not. Cause, yeah. So, um, if you've ever played in Aeroflot Open, it's so strong. They have like different categories. I have category A, B, and C. Uh, category A is for uh, people who have minimum rating of 2550, 
I've never had 2550, so I played twice in Airfoot, both times in category B, and category B is for those who have like higher than 2300, but I, um, I did like a, um, like the first time I played, I played really amazing, I scored like a bunch of different norms, and um, I was not 2300, they made an exception, because I was so young and talented and stuff like that ah to be young and talented ay, ay, ay. <laughs> and the second time that i played the next year in 2016 they um so i was like 2401 uh, had just crossed 2400 yeah i like i played in like i i let me tell you the first two months of my 2016 i played in switzerland for the, i played tournaments in Swiss. actually hold on let's go back a little i played qatar masters end of december I uh, flew to Switzerland, I played uh, another Basel Open there, which I have another game of that here too, the, the last game, I played the Basel Open, uh, it was like right after Christmas, and then I played an, a league tournament, a, a league event in Switzerland, because I was playing for a Switzerland league, and we actually won the whole thing, and then I flew to Belgium to play, actually I think I came back to Iran for a week, and then I flew to Belgium to play a uh, closed event and then from there I went to Serbia to play a closed event and then from there I went to Austria to play league and then from there I flew to Moscow to play air flute open so that was just the first two months of my 2016 so yeah you can already imagine how my body was exhausted before I even started this event I should have cancelled it but everything was already set and paid and I was like yeah I'm just gonna go play it was it was a sad don't do that don't over exhaust yourself so Anyways, <laughs> um, so in this game, we have GMP she scrolling around trying to sniff my tea. Uh, in this game, I really liked it in the sense. Don't death the people, cat. Ah, we got a cat jump coming up. Come on, cat jump so I can go back to my viewers. There we go. Um, so in this game, I. Uh, I, I, my opponent was quite strong. I believe he was also um, a GM twenty five, almost fifty. Yeah, twenty five forty three. Okay, so um, let's go ahead. I'm a little tired of talking. I just want to show some chess. There we go. So I'm a very big fan of this opening. That just trying to do the um, Queen's Indian type and just getting my bishops out. It's very safe if you're looking for a stable up opening, opening to play. That's the way to go. Um, I play. I dabbled around with Grunfeld, Dutch, um, Queen's Gambit, Queen's Gambit, King's Indian, all the Nimzo. I mean, I play. I, I just did everything basically. <laughs> and this is my favorite one. It's so stable and solid. And so, however, there's like a d4 missing it's in order to be like the uh, king, uh, Queen's Indian. So the the idea with this rook e1 is that I uh, he wants to start pushing for the center, but he doesn't want to, like, if he started with d4, then I could do knight e4. There's no more d3 to kick my knight away. So that is why I started rook e1, and after rook e1, if I were to play knight e4, there could be d3s, there could be take first and d3, so there would be a, um, there would be a, uh, what's it called, like a, the center wouldn't be as um, obvious as if the d4 was played. It's more uncertainties with rook e1. So one line that I really like to play, and I play so, so many different games, is the, this thing with c6. Uh, one of my friends recommended it to me years ago, and I really did like it, and I played it so much, and I got sick of it, so I had to change it. But I think this is the, the not exact opening, but this is some of the games that I had to Talia. And this is quite similar to the game that we had in the US Chess Championships um, the round before last. So it's kind of interesting to see the full circle. I didn't play C6 with Talia in US Championships, but I have played C6 with her previously. Um, it's not exactly delayed semi stuff. It's like one of those weird sidelines that is supposed to transpose to a main line, but it never does. But it could always do it, but they don't do it. So it's like a 
funny thing. Um, I was very into the C65 idea because I liked this structure because um, now after you play d4, my queen side is so... I have so many options in the queen side. If I just can get like a bishop e a6, if I can get a knight to c6, this bishop is super cool, this knight is super cool. But if I don't exchange, if I don't get this bishop to a6, then you are going to bring your bishop to this side. And then you would have an attack. So I have to be careful with my king side. Because uh, my king is a tiny bit naked. But your queen side is quite uh, pokeable. Let's go with that. Uh, Eslan, I do know Mitra. We are not in touch, but I grew up knowing her. So I'm, I'm glad she's doing well. I thought she was in France. Uh, anyways, it's kind of a French structure. There we go, yeah. But not exactly. Like my bishop still has stuff to do. And your bishop is quite misplaced. So let's get this knight out. We know where this knight wants to go. Um, knight e2. I think maybe bishop f1. This idea might have been a little faster. But knight e2. Okay. Uh, I have to try and get this bishop out here. But since you didn't play bishop f1, then I'm not in a rush. But I'm prepared to do it. So, I would want to try to play a5, but it's a, it might be a little too early. So, I went for knight a5. Um, knight f4. Now, let me ask you a little question. Let's do a little evaluation. What's going on here? Do you want to be white? Do you want to be black? Keep in mind that I chose to enter this opening. So... Ehsan, are you sure? I thought Qazal was in Zurich and Mitra was in France. I kind of like the white's position too because uh, there is a pos potential for king attack. If black manages to save it, then black has a pretty cool stuff going on in queen side. So um, black has to play it much smarter than white. That's the only the reason I would want to be white personally. But I like this opening because it has so many different possibilities, so I'm good with that. I can do that. So, um, here, what move do you want to do as black? White just played knight f4, white has been trying to do the setup. Now, what should we do? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, bishop a6. I've been foreshadowing this bishop a6 for a while now. If whenever you want to play bishop f1, I'm going to be there to play bishop a6. Uh, in the game, I played queen c7 because I thought if you play bishop f1, then I can go queen c2 and exchange the queens. And um, so I thought this would be a better way to go if I can exchange queens and I can actually try and do something in the queen side. So my opponent was a grandmaster, he was pretty smart, so he tried to uh, poke me back basically. But uh, bishop a6 I think is just as good as queen c7. Bishop a6 is something that I have to do anyway, so I might as well have just done it. Um, I wasn't sure what to do after bishop d2. I thought if I go knight c4, then you can still try to uh, activate your pieces. And I wasn't completely sure about my knight placement over here. So, yeah, um, that's why I kind of went for queen c7, but you see the game is, my game is in the queen side. Now, what should we do with this knight? Should we come back or should we go forward? It's kind of your two options. Yeah, let's go. Let's try to go for um, c4 because if we come back to c6, then this knight is also doesn't really have anything else to do. Like, where else am I trying to go? So let's try to go to c4. Um, at least try to like bother this bishop. So my opponent played bishop f1. Good choice. Wants to come over here and take control on the 
this uh, strong diagonal. Um, I ended up just going for a5, which was a good idea. I still should try to do my best in the queen side. b5, queen d7. Trying to poke around a little. And now, what do you think we should do? Um, now I don't have this bishop a6 anymore, which is kind of why I think I should have done that earlier. But it's not the end of the world. I don't. It's, it would be better if it, this position would be actually pretty good for black if these two bishops were exchanged. That's why instead of trying to bring my knight earlier, I should have brought the bishop earlier. But um, it's still. I'm not losing here. White has advantage, but it's not. It's still white still has to try really hard. So how do you think we can activate some other pieces? Uh, can f6 be played or is it too weakening? Uh, right now f6 is um, a little too weakening, especially because bishop h3 and this pawn is going to have issues. Uh, this is not really desirable. If, this, uh, if the e6 wasn't a problem, then yes, we could do f6. But right now f6 should be like your last option well why don't you try to activate this bishop at least when you play rook e2 because you you either have to try and uh, go back and try to exchange stuff or you have to do rook e2 and when you do rook e2 then at least this bishop d3 is delayed so it gives you more time to deal with it yeah I see a lot of people mentioning bishop g4, uh, bishop b4 now, so good, thank you. Um, yeah, exquisite playing the f6 is always a rough one. So after rook e2, um, what we could do is, hmm, um, well, to be honest, one of the things we kind of do want to do is figure out what to do in the queen side. So, what do you think we should do? Can we push any of these guys? Should we just... Because um, I really want to try and get this knight activated, but I don't really want to commit to g6 just yet. Because it, it's good to get the knight out, but g6 feels a little premature. So long-term black needs to figure out what to do about bishop b7. That is true. Long-term, this bishop is um, in a pickle, to put it gently. So in the game, I went for h6. Whoops. I keep scrolling the wrong way. And my opponent immediately did h4. Um, it's, a, it's good. Like, white's actually forming some really good peace activity. My piece, my piece activity here looks good, but it doesn't have any merits. Like, if my bishop was on h7, yes, I actually do really like my position. It's doing some good stuff. It's controlling around. I love it. Or f5 or e4. If this bishop was in this diagonal, that my position would be actually pretty, pretty dope. But it's not. So I have to be very careful with that. Um, I, here, I felt like I was very squished, and I just wanted to try and... Um, bring some stump stuff for my king so i went for rook c7 g6 is still a suggestion but white is clearly better here so after rook c7 my opponent just tried to um continue re replacing the p pieces to start to really bug me honestly um i should have most likely uh, sorry he should have most likely just tried to go for something with rook c2 first because this rook on e2 doesn't really do anything, so going rook c2 makes the makes it a little more uh, bothersome for me. And now I have to wonder, ah, what if knight goes to d3? What if bishop goes to d3? It it makes my life hard, my life harder. But with bishop h3, now I know uh, all I can't do is touch this pawn. So I cannot touch touch this pawn, but I can do pretty much everything else. So I kind of like that. Uh, Yaroslav, you're right. Black is not in a good position. But I managed to find something and give myself some game only to mess it up on the 40th move. Ha ha ha. So after bishop h3, um, 
I like white doesn't have any immediate threat. Yes, Ehsan, good. Uh, so queen goes to e7, and my idea with queen e7 was just to well bug you. Like I don't want white to have an easy game. I want to bother white as much as humanly possible, and I'm believe me, I'm trying. So um, after this, white is still well. I mean, white is still has that has advantage. So white is using it. Um, but I want to ask you, how do you think white should continue? Because we we can all agree that white's position is better. But how? How do we go about it? Great book, uh, nice, um, nice evaluation. Yeah, white, uh, black does have a good knight and bishop on c4 and b4. If white ever tries to, um, if white ever tries to remove it, you can just take. Yeah, that is true. So that's good of a uh, good evaluation. Um. So. Well, fragrance, I kind of like that, but what else? How else can you prepare for it? Okay, all right, so I see some really nice ideas with trying to move the king, trying to get the queen involved. I don't know if I saw a knight h2 idea, but knight h2 is another great idea. One thing is that for sure, this rook is not supposed to be here. So if you could move this rook, move this knight, and get the queen involved, that would be kind of the easiest way to go, honestly. Yeah, so try to get the queen involved. That's, I, I like, you guys are doing it by saying queen d3. But um, this might be a little bit more sophisticated way to go about it. So, um, now that we know what should white do, let's, let's give it a try. Maybe, um, so now, white, white, queen, d3. Now, as black, what do you think we should do? I agree, this position kind of sucks. But what do you think, how would you play it if this was your game? Peter. Um, the G6 idea, actually G6, mm, pretty decent idea, but you could try to uh, make G6 mm, like more worth it if you played like bishop to C8, as I did, to try to like protect e6 just a little bit and then you could try to do this g6 so that at least you are holding a little bit of your pawn structure together so i went for bishop c8 just defending this guy just a little bit and my opponent went knight h2 do we think knight h2 is a good move because knight h2 like we're trying to go with this knight no, i'm not saying knight h2 is not a good move uh, but I would like to see what you guys think about Knight H2. Uh, 
exclusive, I agree. There is not really a breakthrough in the queen side, and we need to uh, kind of save our, save our king. That's true. But mm, white just made an inaccuracy. Knight h2 is not an accurate move. Black, uh, white should have still done this rook c2 and still try to bring this bishop back because this bishop on h3 is not really helpful. You should. This bishop belongs to in this diagonal, and as long as this bishop is on h3, the attack is not as strong as it could be. So knight h2, it looks good, but it's not really helping White's position. This bishop is pretty, the kind of like just as useless as this bishop. So, uh, opponent made an inaccuracy. What do you think we can do? Uh, there is a computer suggestion that I'm not really a big fan of, so I'm just going to mention it. But we're not really—I don't really want to uh, do too much about it because it's not really—it's uh, not a really good suggestion. I mean, it's a—it's an interesting suggestion, but it's quite unrealistic. So I can't—I kind of don't really want to um, do too much about this unrealistic moves, but. Let's see. It's quite curious to know what you guys are thinking about. Besides how we got to this position, because this position is not exactly ideal. <laughs> I know, I know. It's painful for me to watch. You guys are getting some entertainment. Yeah. I see the chat is kind of agreeing with G5 as well. Yes, G5 is what the computer says, but I didn't, I, it just doesn't, uh, I don't want to weaken my own king. Yeah, like, knight gets to go to G7, blah, blah, but I, I don't, it, it's such a computer move, because let's say take, take, knight goes to H5, then I actually have to play F5. It's like, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's too weird for me to, like, commit to it. I don't, I, yeah, that's the thing, I, fragrance, I don't think I would ever place like this in a real game. Unless that's like the only move. If that's the only move, then yeah, I'll, I'll be able to find it. But as long as there's other moves, I don't really, I don't, I'm not going to be able to find these. Anywho, um, this is actually, this is the best way that, that I could have played this game. And just kind of try to exchange as much as I can, like queen maybe goes to f3. And then I can just do some weird stuff like this, but you get the idea of why this is not exactly, um, you know, my first human brain choice. So, um, I did not do this g5, f5 crazy stuff. I played bishop d7. Uh, it's a normal move, it doesn't really help position as much, it doesn't really harm it. My thought process was that if I get if I need bishop e8, then I'm gonna be able to do bishop e8. This yeah, this was quite impossible to find. I agree. This was a really rough one to try and find. So after bishop going to d7, my opponent uh, went for knight g4. Now what should we do? So I see some nice f5s. Uh, rook c8, I wouldn't really go for. Uh, <laughs> no, g5, we, we've lost the, the, the chance of the g5. There's knight h6. So I um, I started to actually get really um, scared of my, for my position, and I just went for king h8. King h8 doesn't really harm my position, doesn't really help it. It's it's a very sucky position, I'm telling you. It's not, it's not that great of a position. The, the good thing about this position is how I managed to um, almost get away with it. And so my opponent just went for knight h5, normal stuff, 
Again, the best idea would be to do this rook c2 and bishop f1, but besides that, knight h5 is actually holding pretty solid advantage. I went for rook g8, trying to keep my stuff together, and bishop g2. I honestly didn't really understand this bishop g2. I still don't, because, I mean, your bishop is supposed to, like, it doesn't matter if your bishop is around here. Your bishop is kind of blinded by my pieces, unless your bishop is in this diagonal. And bishop uh, g2 doesn't really get you to e4, so I'm, I don't really get it. Yeah, I'm trying to wiggle out, like maybe get my king off the board a little, have fun with it. <laughs> um, so, quite funny, um, I went for queen f8. I'm kind of putting my pieces in for chess 960 at this point. And he, he finally did this rook c2. Now, um, I started to, to, to think about the f5 idea, but it's not ready yet. So how can we try to get my, um, how can I try to get my f5 idea ready? Bishop b7, yeah, let's go. Careful, we still can't really do g6 and stuff because my h6 is quite uh, vulnerable. Ow. So, bishop e7. Um, he played bishop f3. He's kind of trying to get the pieces together, but in a kind of a weirder way than he could. Um, I'm also trying to free my pieces, so I my knight literally has no space to go. So. I'm setting for next game, rook c8, trying to get knight to go to c7. Next, I'm gonna try and go for f5, but I need a little bit more preparation. So, opponent finally did this bishop d1, wants to try and get into this diagonal. Now, is it time to play f5, or can I do, or do I need to do more preparation? This is a supposedly trick question, but quite easy. So, all you have to do is tell me. Well, actually think about what would happen if your opponent plays f5 right now. Yeah, bishops, let's go for bishop e8, because I couldn't play f5, because whoops, knight g6. So, I have to defend the square, and next move, I'm gonna do f5. Rook e2 was a mistake, was a good idea, but it, I still got my f5. So, now, let's, let's do another evaluation. What do we think? Am I still alright? Am I surviving this? Is my opponent just a little too good at this point? surviving right so um, in the game I uh, he he opposed and now what should we take this back with serious question because we can take it to bishop or pawn which one should we try There's a knight. Yeah, let's take with pawn. So I'm gonna now ask you a diff another question. So um, how much?
much do you think white is better? Like, what do you think is this game is like plus what? One of the trainings that I got um, was to actually actively try to say how much is like uh, opponents, how, like what's the what's the evaluation? So, what do you think is the evaluation? Pretty much, Justin. Yeah, almost there. Almost plus six. Yeah. So it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty sad situation for for me. I'm pretty much losing. Almost almost there. Like all White has to do is just kind of win me, which was kind of fun because he um, I almost got away. No, it's like plus six or seven. It's like real bad. So what do you think? Is this a good idea when White is plus that much six seven? Is that is this a good idea or does this like is this winning or is it still kind of unclear because if if it's winning then yeah you should go for it but if it's just gonna bring even more complications for um, for whites then white shouldn't do it so we think this is winning huh Well, to be fair, knight h6 isn't winning. We do have to take it, and I did. But knight h6 is not the best move. What do you think is the best move? Knight h6 still holds a pretty decent amount of advantage. But the problem with it is that it gives black chance to try and activate his pieces, as I did. Not well, taking is doable, but it that it's not as necessary because now when we take, um, if take, well, bishop d7, it could bring more complications. Knight e6 is a pretty good move, but the best move for white is just bishop c2. Just give me checkmate threats. Now I have to try and stop this. So let's say queen g7. Now you can just take on e6. Easy peasy. Does that make sense? So now my opponent took on h6, I take back, he took knight d5, attacking some of my different pieces and my queen obviously. I went for queen g7, he took, I took, and he took over here. So he managed to win these two pawns, but at the same time, I got active. My position got active. So yes, I have two less pawns, but I'm not getting mated anymore right away. So let me ask you, what do you think is the evaluation of this position now? Uh, like the, the engine, what do you think, like how much do you think white is better? Remember previously, before knight takes h6, we said white was better by like uh, plus 6. So that's a, that's a lot of pluses. plus two so white messed it up white managed to win two pawns so here's plus two but it's it was plus six without those pawns that's why whoops 
That's why I always tell you how much peace activity matters more than anything else, more than material. Right now, plus six. And then he eats two pawn and it drops down to plus two. Right? So it makes that's 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 all the difference in the world. Now in this position, white as black, I'm trying I have I can try and actually get something done with this position. Uh, I should have played bishop h5 first. I didn't. I played queen h7 because I didn't want to deal with um, any threats on my, like, the queen stuff happening. But I should have went for bishop h5. I chickened out a little. Um, so let's say I went for queen h7 and bishop f4. Now, what do you think we should do as black? Kind of funny because right now I actually have a pretty good move. surprised nobody's saying it I see a bishop h5 bishop h5 is the second best move but it doesn't work and it's not enough not queen h4 not enough not enough Bishop g6, not enough. Think bigger. You actually have a chance to equalize right now. Which I also missed, so don't beat yourself up, but... So ideally, right now, we would want to use this thing like... It's so cool, my, my pieces are actually active, finally, after like 37 moves. So, yes, Ahsan, bishop should take on b, whoops, bishop should take on b5. The idea is that I can't do this knight move because I lose my rook. So, in order to be able to do this knight move and attack your bishop, I'm gonna give up this bishop, and when you take it now, I get knight d5. And next move, I'm gonna take on f4. And now attacking over here. First of all, I took one of my pawns back. Now my knight is super active. And, uh, well, if you take, I just take. And we are going to end up in this position, which is most likely just still. I mean, this is still a very rough position to try and handle for both sides. But it's compared this position to like 10 moves ago when I couldn't even breathe in that position. So, peace activity. I went for a uh, bishop going, I went for bishop h5 and I attacked the rook and he took c7. Rook takes e6 is better, but I understand why um, t taking on c7 is more appealing. You eat more pawns here and I mean, this kind of makes more sense, not gonna lie. You get to eat over here, you get to probably eat there, and then you're gonna just push pawns and ta da. Um, he took bishop c7, I took that guy, and took over here, and here, this is move 40. So, for those of you who don't know, um, of how air flute open works, it's one of the oldest and strongest opens in the world, and it's so, uh, it's so cool, but at the same time, it's so long. <laughs> um, like at, like, a lot of the super, like, professional events, you get, um, you get, when you get to move 40, you get another half an hour added to your clock, and this is a move 40. So my opponent did his move 40, he got half an hour, and it's my turn to do and get my half an hour, and I messed it up, because I didn't have any time on my clock to think. 
So yeah, and I see you guys are suggesting rook takes g3, but does rook takes g3 really work? That was what I was trying to figure out and I couldn't figure it out right on time and I uh, didn't play it and I lost the game in a matter of like less than 10 moves. So yeah. So I see you guys are thinking about rook g3 and thank you yourself. Yeah, from that position with no move under the attack to this, that's pretty huge. I know, right? Um, I, um, so let's see. Rook takes g3. Well, you gotta take it, right? Queen takes g3. King h1. It's, I mean, this is actually pretty nice because I get to take over here and then bring the rook included too. So most likely not gonna go that route, right? Uh, let's say you try to move the king and check. I like this rook roller stuff. Another check. Uh, another check. Mm. Something should go to d2. Let's go with the rook. King c4 or c3. I can just take over here. And uh, let's check my thing. There we go. So, um, king going to h1 doesn't work. You don't need to calculate it. King h1 just doesn't work. Uh, but king f1 might work. So, I, I couldn't find what to do after king f1. So, now that we have time, let's sit here and think. What should we do after king f1? How do you play a passing move in a position like this to just get... That's what I did. So, Great Wolf, that's what I tried. I tried to do a passing move just so I could have enough time so I could actually think for next move. But this was my one and only chance to get a draw and I missed it. So let's see, where do you want to go now? I see a lot of queen f4s, I see some queen d3s. Queen f4 is your only way. Queen d3, uh-uh. Now opponent gets to bring queen back, bring bishop. No, we need the king to stay naked. So queen f4, let's say king goes to e2 or e1. Let's say go to e2 first. Now where do we go after king e2? What do you think? Yeah, rook c3. It's so great. Yeah, I I didn't find rook c3. That was that's the only key move because if you don't do rook c3 you don't really have anything left. So I didn't find rook c3 and so I didn't do it and I lost the game. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that was the sad part about this game, honestly. Um, so let's see, what else can I try to talk about in this one? After rook c3, um, I actually have some serious threats going on. I also want to do queen h2 and push your king back. So let's say if you just play h5, then I can just give you check. And um, when the king moves, now I can just give you check, check. So 
that's one way to go about it. Or queen just g3 and then king d2 and then queen d3 and then check, check, check. So what about if queen went to e1 here? What do you think would happen here? So that's the thing, rook c3 here doesn't necessarily work, you don't really need rook c3 anymore because it doesn't really have that that check threat as, as strongly. So what else? Yeah, rook g8, or you could take over here too, honestly. But rook g8 seems to be the stronger way to go, and the only way that white can stop it is rook a2, which I don't, it just blows my mind. Because now when you give check, king goes to e2, and you have to keep cutting the king here, which is so, so weird. But, I mean, why not? Fun stuff, huh? Yeah, so, um... It's just so, it's just one of those positions that it's kind of always going to haunt me because I always say cut the king, like rook c3, rook g3, I always talk about it, but I, like in this position, I just, it really caught me off guard. So, that was the first game. Let me actually show you how the game ended. I didn't do rook g3, I played rook f8 just because I didn't want to lose any more pawns. And now queen e3, I missed my chance on trying to t take on g3. I got my 30 minute, but it's not easy. I don't have, I, I can't find it. I, there's nothing else to find. And he's already like plus three. I tried to uh, organize something, hopefully, maybe try to poke a little, but it, it's quite impossible to do so. Tried to activate it a little, but my opponent already is pretty winning. And my position is sad and... I'm just kind of struggling to keep all these pawns uh, away, and I uh, I just lost here. Yeah, kind of a sad game because I thought I had such a great thing going, and yeah, it just kind of fell apart pretty pretty fast. Yeah, so it, it wasn't one of my happiest games, but it was definitely quite educational. So. What do we think about this? Did we like it? Did we hate it? I kind of hated it, honestly, but... Uh, it's very educational, so I had to share it. I couldn't not share it. Alright. Um, I'm gonna give it a second for questions. Yeah, exquisite. It's quite sad. I can't. I mean, I I can't lie. It was just. It was such a sad game for me. But um, I just really. It, it's it's good to learn from. I was very proud of it. Like I actually managed to survive it way longer than I probably should have. So, yeah. All right, I'm gonna move on to a slightly happier game. So this game, I was also black. Ooh, hi, GMPC. Uh, I actually don't call him GMPC off stream, just on stream. Um. So yeah, in, in this game, uh, this is this is the Basel Open, right? Yeah, this is the Basel Open. 2016. This is like right after Qatar Masters and right before, uh, like a month before, uh, well actually like two months, before Air Food. So that's, that's a part of my busy early 2016 that I told you guys about. So it was pretty interesting game because I, well I kind of really enjoyed it, but I couldn't finish it up and that was a very um, sad thing for me because I played it so well 
and right at the end I just chickened out and you will see how I chickened out it was a just one of those um, situations where when you chicken out you really chicken out badly so let's go ahead and get started ah clicked on the wrong thing so um, I uh, I believe my opponent uh, was from Lithuania or Latvia. One of those two. I think it was Latvia. If somebody wants to check it and let me know, that would be kind of fun too. Um, yeah, I don't think GMP she can help. T I mean, actually, he's going to be able to help take away the sadness for this um, pretty horrifying game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was just a sad game, man. I, it's yeah i can't like at some points like it's it gets really sad to uh watch some of these games because i like i spent so much energy and time and trying to um he's latvian great to trying to like make it the position work and you you get right there and you you mess it all up so yeah we got that going for us too it's a part of chess. We have to kind of deal with it. Yeah. I know. He's being so cute. He's kind of... I don't know if you guys can see him well, but he's like putting his face against the wall. It is super duper cute. Alright, so. I'm gonna uh, go a little faster because the opening didn't really have as... Uh, the opening was a... Like, I don't know. Like, it was a little weird. It, like, there was nothing wrong with it, but I... um. I didn't know how to, like, my opponents knew much better on how to play it. Like, I knew what I was doing, clearly, I mean, I, I got into a pretty good position, but my opponents knew better. Like, I uh, I usually want to play this um, Queen's Indian, as I just showed you, right? So, or I want to play this Nimzo Indian, as I would show you. But my opponent was trying to stop me. And so I had to kind of, I was kind of forced into playing this d5 ideas. Um, so I got my knight out, got them, got the pieces out that I know where they belong. Now the other question is what to do with this bishop, what to do with this bishop. I have no idea what is this a3. What do you guys think here? Black to move, what on God's green earth are we doing? Uh, Great Wolf, I have no idea what that means. I did scratch Pichy on... It was kind of nice. She thinks she's cute. So, like, that's the thing. I went for bishop e7, and I just played it normal. But apparently, I had a chance to play d4. What do you guys think? Does this d4 look crazy, or is this just kind of just cute? So, what do we think? <laughs> Great Wolf, I don't know how I missed that story. Man, we could all use engines in our lipstick. Ah, there's a, there's a way to get men to wear lipstick. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, it's so funny that people actually think there's such cool technologies available to people just everywhere. Like, I, I, like, I, my iPad and my iPhone are back from 2018. I haven't upgraded them. Like, you think I'm gonna spend money on a little tiny robot to put on my lipstick? You're cute. <laughs> yeah. Um... So yeah, a lot of lot of interesting stuff going on around the world. 
Uh, okay, back to the chess of it. This d4 looks interesting, but I don't, I don't know. It feels a little too early to to try it because then I would have to go for e5. Pretty like, what if b4? Then I would have to like play e5, and then you could do like b5, and it could get a little messy. And I didn't really want to get messy because this was like the last round of the tournament, and I was really hoping to finish it uh, positive. And so I just went for um, I just went for like bishop e7, normal stuff. He took, I took, he played d4, b6, trying to save my pawn. Bishop b5, okay, let's save my uh, knight. All right, let's keep saving this bad boy. Actually, good boy, this is a good boy. This, this became a really good boy in a little bit. Castle, castle, and now, this position, it's a very typical position. It's a little messy, it's a little complicated. You don't exactly know what where your pieces belong. You have a lot of possibilities, but you're not entirely sure about it. Same for your opponent. What do you think we should do? How are you going to try and make something work from this position? Okay, I see some ideas of trying to get bishop to d6. Um, not entirely. Exchange on e5, nah. Too, too much, too much. We need to lessen it. We need to lessen the crazy. Knight taking on e5, nah. It's so cute. Nobody's saying this. Exquisite wants to kick this bishop with a6 too early. Nope. So bishop d6 possible, taking possible, all of these are possible, but nobody is th thinking about the move that I th I did, which makes me think my move was either super cool or super weird. <laughs> Knight b8 to save a good boy. No, you're going on the wrong way. You gotta come try and maybe go the other way. Knight e4 is premature. I agree on that. Nah, you guys, no, no, no. So what do you want to do with your queen? Let's try to figure that out too. Because you, uh, you got to try and figure out what to do with your pieces. Queen, bishop, rook. These pieces, like these three are fine. Everything else could be improved. Why not just take while you take? Then what am I supposed to do with this guy? Just go back to e8? Ugh. I already had an, I, we already saw a game like that with my knight on e8. I don't, I don't, I can't do knight on e8. They make me cry. Uh, not 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 exactly queen c7. So why not queen d6? So let me tell you a little little story. Ha, story time with Dorsa. Hashtag. Um, in our team here at SLU, we have a, like a running joke about how um, like the uh, the. Our knights like to be in like e6, d6, or like e3, d3. So knights are not good on f6 and c6. They're only good if they are on uh, d6, like on, on those like third rank e or d file. Those are kind of fun. I don't know who started it. I remember uh, Rambaldi had that saying, and then we kind of got used to it. I have no idea how serious we are on it, but 
we've been trying on it for a while? Seems to work. This is before I joined the team, but I managed to uphold the team values and I did what I had to and I got this position going and so it's it's a cool thing. You, it's I recommend it. So let's try to get our uh, knight to come to e6. No, grade 12, that's like, the, that's like the fun thing, like knights are obviously good when they're working together and dealing with center, that's not the problem. Uh, the problem uh, is that the knight could be better if they are on E and D file, which is not exactly a true thing, it's just by experience, we've kind of happened to have a lot of fun with that. So, what do you think? So, queen d6, opponent just played queen f3. Now, what should we do? I can't exactly follow up with my plan. I mean, technically, I could, but that also gives that it makes it a little. Um, a little... I don't really know what to do with my bishop. Did I... Yes, I did play queen d6. But I went for queen e6 now because I wanted to get my queen to be in, kind of involved. But at the same time, get my bishop to also be around. So I went for queen e6. And he went for queen e2. And then I did bishop d6. And then I got knight e7. So the idea of trying to get knight d8, there is nothing exactly wrong with it, but this was before I joined the team. I didn't know the values and beliefs of the chess team here in St. Louis. I apologize to my slow teammates for not upholding the beliefs on trying to get the knight on e or d6. I'm so sad about that. I let you guys down. <laughs> but... <laughs> Anyways, um, jokes aside, knight d8 is kind of a cool idea, trying to go knight to e6, but I didn't exactly know where else to go after e6, and so I wanted to try and activate as many pieces as possible, and see, you're trying to do f5, boom, I block it. If my knight was on e6, I couldn't exactly block it, so yay. Yes, yes, I apologize, now I know better than to not put the knights on e or d6 or 3 e d3 6 i guess so uh in the game opponent bent knight to uh f3 now what shall we do to be fair th these ideas with g4 would have been kind of cooler if it if i didn't have this free and free pawn to eat um so my guess is he's trying to prepare for these ideas uh, he could have probably played like rook c1, chilled out a little, but he went for knight f3. Nothing wrong with knight f3, but what do you think we should do? Yeah, that's a very common idea to try to do this knight c6, e7, then f5 ideas. Uh, trying to do a6, I kind of like it. I like kicking this guy. But I don't really want to give up this. Or, or, let me also ask you. This knight going to f3, what would white want to do? If it was white to move again, what does white want to do? Because I see a lot of you are suggesting moves that are alright, but they're not exactly the best ideas. And I think the problem isn't that it's not the best idea, it's that you don't think what does my opponent want. So what does your opponent want? Exactly, he wants to eat my queen, he wants to do knight g5, g4, or bishop d3 and just poke this queen. So I have to stop it. So let's go for h6. So we stop it. Uh, in the game he got a uh, little nuts and went g4. Now, is g4 a good idea or not? Let me let me rephrase it. 
is G4 nuts? Or does it actually work? Okay, so G4 not nuts. I can live with that. Now, what do you think G4 wants? Okay, it works, but why? G4 wants F5, right? So I gotta save my queen. What should we do? I guess the most important question is, but well, can I take it? Which you can easily answer no, because, sorry, bishop D7s. You can't really take it. Boom, bishop d7. So white wants to play f5, so what should I do? How can I save my queen? If we touch this, then it's, it's like now this is becoming a monster. Take, take g5 or b4. Ah, not that. No, I don't want to give my opponent permanent advantage. No, bishop e5, I don't want to give my good bishop. It's a good bishop. I don't want to give it up. So what about rook c7? We said that we can't play knight g4 because there is bishop going to d7. So let's stop that. Let's, to, let's do two birds with one stone. I actually don't want to hit birds. Two targets with one shot. I also don't want to shoot anything. Let's satisfy two. Ah, let's just do two things at once. Open a new square to run away, and I also want to eat your pawn. So, what do you think about that? Oh, two birds for Pishi. He actually did catch a bird once didn't kill it. He killed the bird by giving it a heart attack. Didn't even touch the thing. Like attacked it, the bird just fell and I, and I tried to like massage its heart and I was quite unsuccessful. It was actually a very sad situation. But anyways, Pishis never killed a bird. Intentionally. Or so successful. Well, I mean he intended to attack it, give it a heart attack, so technically he did <gasps> my little murderer. Um, King H1, why? Where are you trying to go? Zippel, my c6, we don't, we, we did this whole thing to come to the other side. We don't want to go back. It doesn't make sense. Um, so, uh, my c6 was legally possible, but it doesn't help our situation because I spent so much time trying to bring the knight to this side. Knight c6 is not really, doesn't, that kind of like messes with the harmony. 
So that's why we don't want to do that. Drook c7 opens queen. I want to eat your pawn. F5. Let's get my queen back in its crib, I guess. Now g5. g5 is a little too ambitious. White's position is not ready. If the queen was in a little more ready position, if there were more things that he could attack, it would actually be a doable thing. But g5 is too early, but so was f5, and so was g4. So if from here, white started to be a little too hasty. Like rook c1 would have made more sense. Then you try to like poke it, it goes away, and then you try to like block it, and it, it's still kind of preparing for that uh, ultimate g5 idea. So you still need a lot of preparation. Uh, because when g4 happens, then rook c7, f5, and g5 too early. I take, you take. Now, question. What should we do? We have a bunch of different things to eat or poke at. So what should we do? So I got one wood for c takes d4. I can live with that. What about f5? Can I eat on f5 and get away with it? Both of them are possible. I in the game went for knight takes f5. Um, knight takes f5, white has an only move of bishop d3, and then I get cool knight e4. And if queen goes to h5, then this is a we're gonna come back to it momentarily. Uh, if we were to take here on d4, that's another thing that we definitely could do. Now, the thing to uh, kind of try and be mindful of is that after take, well, what if uh, bishop takes? Now what do we do? I can, maybe I would make rook c2, queen got a move, and it's such a complicated position, and I didn't want to give white that satisfaction of this like weird, complicated position. Uh, this is probably this is most likely what I would have gone for and the, the knights are a little too strong like this there's a lot of different things that's happening I don't necessarily love this position so I didn't want to give you another opening I thought maybe c4 could be useful later so I didn't do that I took on f5 and then I did knight e4 knight e4 again another only move knight h6 does not work because you take it over here and queen h5 Everything is kind of going to my king. It's a hurtful thing. Uh -uh, nope. So, um, I did knight e4, queen h5. Now, white, uh, black to move, what should we do? Besides petting the cat, which is being super cute. Knight h6. Now knight h6 does work. Um, kind of like only move because you can't really take over here. Actually, why can't you take knight takes g5? What do you think is wrong with knight takes g5? So what do you think 
is wrong with my Thix G5? <laughs> well, the thing is that your F5 falls either with Rook or with Bishop. And either one, uh, white gets more activity and you're going to have a hard time trying to cover your king up. So that's why knight h6 was the best one and black is still holding. There's black's position is completely playable. Uh, a little scary, yes, but it's not losing. Now, white made a mistake and he played rook to f4. Now, white, um, how can you use this mistake? I found the best move in my game. Well, there are like two moves that are equally good. I found them in my game. So what do you think we should do here? And, um, well, basically, why do you think rook f4 is such a bad move? Because if rook f4 wasn't played, white should take over here. We take bishop c4, trying to put more pressure on this. I would most likely take it over here and probably, like, go for queen g4. And this is a pretty doable endgame. Nothing, not much happening. Uh, e6, maybe knight takes over here. It's a, it's a doable endgame. Uh, still pretty pretty cool because there's so many pawns to eat and so many things to poke, but it's doable. That's the point. Um, but the way my opponent played, he just kind of handed me the game after rook f4. Now, why do you think I'm saying this rook f4 is such a bad move? Exactly, look at these bishops. Okay, we should never play f6 actually. I mean, the problem with f6 is that knight takes e4 and when you take back then there's like a bunch of checks that's kind of the only problem with it and then you would have to deal with a bunch of other type of checks it's not worth it that's kind of the problem with it um so not f6 what about taking what's wrong with taking that's a simple move Any suggestions? Mm. No, well, after take, what should we do? It's a little complicated, I agree. It's kind of warming up your brain, isn't it? Now, I can just do queen h3 or just c4. And if take, then we could try and take over here. But I didn't want to overcomplicate the position for me. So here, I just took on d4 because I wanted to open up over here. Which c takes d4 was the best move. This is actually this is one of my best games ever, but not um, it. I couldn't get the, I couldn't win it, so I don't really show it as often. But it was a very great game, yeah. So, um, and anyways, so uh, in the game he simply took back on e4. Now, if there was bishop d4, now I have this f6. Because if you take it, I don't see, remember what was wrong here with playing f6? The problem was that when you take, well, I couldn't really uh, take back because bishop c4. And I can't really take over here because knight takes d6, right? 
but when after I take here, if you take with bishop, now, well, first of all, I have rook c1, but even if not that, I have f6. Why? Because if you take, now I could take here. If you take on d6, whoa, 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 sorry, sorry, rook c1 still doesn't work. What am I talking about? You can do bishop e5. There we go. Or you could simply take back. If check now, you can take it. That's the difference. Oh, brain freeze for a minute. And after take, you can just take over here. See, now you have a bunch of pieces in exchange for just a rook. It's totally worth it. So, um, this rook f4 was prematurely done. Uh, white should have prepared better. White should have dealt with one of the pieces here. Because rook f4 just gives me way too many possibilities. And I used them. I actually managed to get a pretty better um, position. So, I went for, after rook f4, I went for uh, take. And my opponent just took on e4. All right, we got to take back. And he played bishop c4. Because, well, the thing is, if you take it, I will take back. Now, if you take it, now I have f5. And this guy is falling. So a lot of the white pieces are just up in the air. And that's why it doesn't really work for white. So now, let's go back to the game. And he went for bishop c4. Now, black to move, what should we do? Keep, 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 the, keep the flow of the game going. Um, remember that why we are trying to do this. We're trying to uh, get the peace activity. We're trying to make sure that I'm not getting checkmated. That's another part. Yeah, after f5, if you took, it was kind of cool, right? You kind of mm, plug cut the cord, cut, unplug, cut the tubes, okay, I'm using medical terms, I need to stop, but yeah, that's why it wouldn't really work, yes, b5, thank you, Tyrell, kick the bishop, after b5, um, now, actually, I'm gonna ask you guys again, how much do you think black is better? So last game you correctly identified like white had plus six or white had like plus two. What about now? What's white? Well, how much is black better? We can agree that black is better, right? Just how much? Plus five, almost, yeah. Black is better almost by five. Yep. Uh, it's kind of funny because now white doesn't really have anything to do. If you take over here, eh, big deal. I'll just take it. You take over here, eh, big deal. I can just take it with whichever. So this rook on c7 proved to be very worthy. Uh, this bishop here proved to be quite worthy. Same with this bishop. Same with this queen. See how they're all kind of working together. Uh, so after bishop c4, b5, my opponent kind of tried to be as tricky as humanly possible, and he went for rook f6. Now, black to move. What should we do? Rook f6 is kind of a tricky move. You have to be very careful on how you continue. one move that wins everything else white gets away with it nope bishop e5 is not it can you tell me what is wrong with bishop e5 why bishop e5 doesn't work this is so much fun for me everybody thank you for making my night ha Bishop e5 does not work. Why do you think bishop e5 doesn't work? 
Exactly, Rook takes h6. Now when you take back, again, check. Careful, careful, everybody. And if bishop g7, well, this really doesn't work because you're going to get checkmated soon, my friend. Can't move this pawn. Such a sad checkmate. And if you just play king h8, it's just a draw. White manages to get away with a draw. So you have to be very careful every single move not to make that kind of mistakes. So this bishop is a very key star in my king attack. So let's get rid of it. I, uh, I took this, um, I take b takes c4, and he took the h6, because if, I mean, if he takes back, I can just now, uh, can I just take this now? Yeah, I can just take this now, and this will be pretty pleasant. Um, if he played, well, in the game, he took on h6. We kind of have to take it, because we're getting checkmated. Now, knight goes to g4, so... Again, how should we continue as black? Keep in mind, some stuff are happening on h6. We have to be quite careful on this. What do you think we should do? Uh, it's not just knight takes h6 that's scary. This bishop is also, whoops, not that one. This bishop is also kind of scary, so... You have few options on how to defend. Which one do you think is best one? Uh, king h7 doesn't really help. There's also queen takes h6. Actually, king h7 is a pretty bad idea because uh, you get checkmated in two. Be careful. C3 looks good, exactly everybody, C3 is the best one, because when you take, ah, eh, big deal, I'll just go away, eh, big deal, I'll just run away, and now I have rook g8 too, but the good thing is that there is no bishop d4s, there is no way for your bishop to come in to my um, attack, so C3 was a good idea, After I should have played the C3 and I should have continued something like this, but I did it a little too late. I started with f6 because I thought if you give check, I can block it. If you take, I can run. And I got myself into this position, which is still pretty better. But you have right now, you have only one move that uh, keeps the advantage. So what is your one move to keep the advantage? While you guys think about that, I need to plug in my iPad so I can read your lovely chats. Ugh. Ouch. Nope, rook h8 actually doesn't work. The problem with rook h8 is this check. You're, you would actually lose this now. Because if you move, boom. Now you're losing. Rook h8 doesn't work. Rook c5, thank you. Rook c5 is the way to go. And um, after rook c5, uh, I really like this idea because after rook c5, well, you can't really do knight f5, so your knight is kind of uh, kind of weird here. Now you just have to take a move and like re go away with your queen. Now I get to save my queen. And in the game, he should have played bishop takes d4, and I would have most likely just taken over here, and it would have just been like, I'm, I have a full bishop up, so it would be pretty easy to win after. But he didn't do that, and he just went for knight takes c4, and I really wish I had done this c3, honestly. Anyways, I gave check, you go away, I did rook h8. Uh, I could have started with rook h8, you move the queen, then check, but it's kind of the same thing. Now, let me actually ask you, this is pretty easy, pretty easily done. Black is super winning, it's like minus 8. 
Um, so, how do you think we can win this? Black to move, you, you just have to find the idea of how to win it. And I was in time trouble and I didn't find the idea. So, all you have to do is find that strategic idea of how to win. What do you think? This is not a draw. That's why it kind of goes for the pile of oops. I messed up. That's kind of the theme of today. Exactly, yeah, I should have went for queen h3, simple idea, I want to do queen f3, take, take, and I want to give you checkmate with my strong, what? with my strong bishop. I should have done that, but I didn't. That's, that's kind of the whole point of I missed this idea completely. And so in the game I started with rook g5, continued with rook h8, and again I should have done this queen h3, I didn't. I went for queen f5 and I messed it up. Yep. I kept thinking I needed to get my bishop activated, but I completely forgot about I could exchange the queen on f3. You're forced to exchange the queen on f3. And if queen uh, if I played queen h3, you you are forced to allow me to do that because well, I'm sorry, I'm giving you checkmate, so you're kind of forced to defend that checkmate. Let's say you go queen to f2, now I can give you another check, and I'm forcing, forced checkmating you now. After queen h3, why not rook g1? Um, I could just take that, and... I mean, it, it works, but I could just take that and then just go rook h3. Also, um... What about, if you go here, why can't I just continue with my uh, same plan? You have to take it, and now, yes, this is not as beautiful of a win as it was. I'm still giving you checkmate ideas. I mean, you could take it and maybe just try king g1, but this is still winnable. Um, so, yes. Yeah, I messed up. I went for queen f5, and he took, I took, he took, I went rook f2, and, um, yeah, I tried to continue for a little bit, but it was a draw, I mean, it was really hard, this is kind of a, like, I went from a super winning position that all I had to do was find a queen h3, queen f3 win, to this, and it was really quite hard to win, um, I tried for a little bit, but there was not really that's easy to do and we agreed on a draw so yeah it was kind of a sad game for me because I was really hopeful on it and I tried so hard and I played such a great game early on and I got such a good opening transition to middle game and then I got such a good middle game transition to well actually not transition just got such a good middle game to just maneuver around with my pieces and attack and defuse his attack and continue with my attack and all those and kind of bummed it the last minute yeah um i did a little post on instagram so for those of you who are joining from my instagram thank you i always like those i i'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to do more um there to get more people to come here too i see a lot of some of you have joined the link uh, what, what's your time? Ooh, I have no idea. This game was like five years ago. <laughs> and it makes me feel so old because 2015, 16, 17 was my like really high on chess. Like I was just always flying around. And yes, she's a super cute cat. He is GMP she. Um, alright, so we are gonna switch to Twitch. Haha. <laughs> uh, if you don't follow us on Twitch, do it. Like now. <laughs> and um, we are going to switch to Twitch because I want to review your games. So send me your games on Lee Chess. So when we, um, it's gonna take me about five to probably just five minutes to switch to switch to Twitch. Haha. <laughs> and uh, please send me your chats links. Um, uh, please send me your Lee Chess links of your game in chat on Twitch. There we go. That was a mouthful. And um, make sure to follow us, subscribe us. Uh, yeah, if you have any cool games, I would love to see it. We, we so far there's never been a time that I'm sitting there. And I'm like I got no games. There's always games. So please do that. Actually, right now this is a winning game because I have rook h8. Let's go. If you move back, white messed up. 
here. Should have went for king f4. And then take here. My bad. But <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, yeah, so Twitch, uh, the tw switching to Twitch, uh, it's just STL chess. Let me also double check on that. Uh, uh, where is my switch to Twitch? I should have a command for switch to Twitch. Sounds fun. Um, yeah, STL chess. STL chess club, actually. So yes, this is our Twitch ID. Please come there and send us um, your games. Um, give me about five minutes so I can refill on tea, uh, give the cat a hug, and I will see you there in uh, shortly. Make sure to, I see a lot of you are following, great, already. So make sure to follow us and preferably subscribe so I can brag about it, how many subscribers I get on my time. <laughs> But besides that, I will see you soon. Uh, yep. How do you get Twitch? Uh, make sure to come on our channel on St. Louis Chess Club, open Twitch, look for us, and 